Good evening, everybody. Good evening and um, welcome to this evening's event, this really wonderful screening of uh, women in Latin American experimental animation. It's great to see you all here. I'm Ruth Hayes, an animation faculty here at Evergreen, co-faculty of MediaWorks. Um, you'll get your chance. <laughs> um, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge our true hosts, the people of the Medicine Creek Treaty Tribes on whose unceded territory this college stands. Historically, the Olympia area has been a center for trade and exchange among many Salish Sea tribes. These include the Squaxin people who are the traditional custodians of this land, as well as the Nisqually, the Chehalis, the Skahomish, and others. With this awareness, we honor their ancestors and pay our respects to the past and present elders of the Medicine Creek Treaty Tribes and to all Native peoples in the area. We're grateful for this opportunity to learn on their lands. So again, welcome all. I'd also like to extend special welcomes to experimental film faculty Dustin Zemmel and his students from St. Martin's College, our neighbors. Thank you for coming. It's good to have you here. We hope that we get to rub elbows with you more in the future. Um, as well as uh, many friends from the wider Olympia community. We're also happy to have you here. Um, tonight's the event is the result of many people's efforts. It's supported jointly by these academic programs, MediaWorks, now you can clap. Yeah. Um, Studio Archive Field, yay, good. Uh, the Spanish Speaking World. <laughs> And unruly bodies. Yeah, we have unruly bodies here, right? OK, good. Um, we also appreciate the financial support of Evergreen's President's Equity Fund, the Evergreen Art Lecture Series, and the Evergreen Academic Deans. So thank you very much for that. And I especially want to thank staff and student workers of Media Services for their crucial technical support student Ryan Clark for their wonderful poster and program design. Yeah. Um, Sheila Sawyer in the Seminar 2 Support Office for juggling the paperwork, and Rose Bond of the Pacific Northwest College of Art in Portland with whom I've been able to collaborate uh, twice now to bring Lena and um, these programs of Latin American experimental animation to this region. Yeah. Um, Okay, I want to introduce Lena, our, our guest presenter tonight. Lena Aguirre received a, received a PhD in Latin American Cultural Studies with a specialization in visual culture and cultural theories from Ohio State University and a master's degree in Latin American literature from, <clears throat> from Pontificia Universidad Javeriana in Bogota. She currently works as a writer and independent scholar in Athens, Georgia. Her research focuses on Latin American contemporary visual arts, animation, and poetry, especially on subjectivities and affect, and the cultural aspects of globalization. Since 2014, she's collaborated on the curatorial and critical project Moebius Animacion, whose main goal is the dissemination and study of Latin American experimental animation. She's co-curator of Trends in Latin American Experimental Animation, that we screened here two years ago. And this evening screening Latin American women in experimental animation. Um, so please join me. Oh, before we welcome you, I was going to say two other things. Um, one is that um, because these are um, films by women animators from Latin America, uh, women animators in general, a lot of them are very personal works. So you can expect that there will be some issues that may cause um, disturbing reactions. So we're just giving a blanket trigger warning in case these things of um, uh, sexual violence, et cetera, um, upset you. Um, the other thing is that in the program, you'll see the second to the last film, Vida, by Jackie Argo, who is an Evergreen alum. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it tonight for the screening. Um, but we just wanted to point out that that film is silent, so there's no soundtrack on it. So when there's no sound, you don't worry about it. That's the way it's supposed to be. 
Okay, I'm glad I remembered those things. All right, so please join me in welcoming Lena to introduce the films. Thank you. Mic too or no? Uh, you want to use that mic? Yeah, like I, this makes me a yeah. little nervous. So you can um, the little red button, the little and then just button. remember to turn it off for the films. Oh. Push the button. Push the think, button. I think you push it for he said a couple of seconds. There. It's on. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Good. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm very short, so I don't like to be behind that. Uh, yesterday at PNCA, Rose had to put a little step for me to, to, to you know, to, yeah, to be on so that I, my head could be a little higher than the podium. Um, uh, welcome to this screening and thanks for coming. Uh, thank you, Ruth, for the presentation and to uh, everybody here in Evergreen. This is the second time uh, that I come on behalf of Moebius Animacion. This is our website. Uh, it's our curatorial project. We are dedicated to to show Latin American experimental animation around the world. We show programs, different programs in uh, different parts of the world, in many here in the United States, in Central Europe, in l different countries of Latin America. And we, in, on our website, you will find, uh, we are like a little library of experimental animation. So what we do is we use uh, films that are already on the, on the web, and we organize them, categorize them, and uh, we do research on many on the, of them, and we also show many of them. So some of the films you're going to watch tonight are on, on, on the web, are on Vimeo, um, uh, some of them are not, but uh, our website is a really good source if you, uh, after the screening, get interested in experimental, in Latin American experimental animation. Um, okay, about, let's, I want to talk just a little bit about the program you were about to see. Uh, in Moebius Animacion, uh, we, uh, as I just said, we curate different programs. We put together these screenings uh, for different purposes. And normally what we do is we invite uh, animators that we know and we have, uh, we, you know, we have seen their work and we invite them and that's how it works. And uh, many times the programs as curators, you know, are guided by our taste and our um, critical criteria and uh, our interests. However, this time uh, what we did is we put a call for works, an open call for works for women animators. We said, okay, if you are a woman, are from Latin America or are a Latina woman in the United States, uh, we are interested in your experimental short films. Understanding experimental animation, not necessarily as non-narrative, like vanguardist film, but uh, films that have a, any component of experimentation and at different levels, uh, from sound to narrative to a process, which has been, is a big thing in women's films, in, 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 in uh, women's uh, animated films, uh, and other aspects. So you will see that some of the films are not like, oh, is this an experimental film? Yeah, you will see there's an aspect, many cases is the, the way the space is treated, or materiality, or materials are used that are not normally used for animation are used for animation in this case. So it is a very, we use a very open um, idea, notion of experimentation. Um, so after doing that, we got all kinds of films. We, we found very many new things. We got 90 films in two weeks of uh, having our call open. And uh, then we, what we, we tried to put together a program where we could show the diversity of geographies, ages. We got films from people from 19 to 58 years of age. Uh, also like, uh, types of professionals we had, like we have students of animation, undergraduates, and we also have uh, 
pro experienced professional animators, or we have people who are dedicated to other arts or crafts, but have found in animation a space of freedom and exploration, which is the, the, the case, um, at least for, I think, the whole program. Um, so you will see different uh, techniques and topics. Um, our main interest was to understand, it, it, this is a research-based, uh, our project, Moebius is a research-based curatorial project, so our interest was to see what women animators are doing, what are their interests, how is that they are producing films now, uh, what are the conditions in which they work, what are the obstacles they face, um, in order to get all that information, we uh, also did uh, interviews with the written interviews with the authors, and we are going to, in the future, we're going to produce a book uh, trying to put together all this wonderful material we have been collecting. So um, tonight you're going to see one of the versions of the program. We have different ones because it's just, you know, like there's really interesting films. Uh, and uh, I hope you like it, and we will talk a little bit at the end of the, of the program. Remember, there's one film that is silent, uh, and just be prepared, and let's try to respect the silence that the, the author is proposing to us, okay? Thank you. I'm actually going to play it from here. Um, okay, whenever we have the lights. Okay, lights. Please turn off your cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you.
So, this is basically how it worked. Um, 
I was sitting all day in a dark room, completely isolated from the world outside. I had one lamp uh, on each side of the table I was working on. Doing a self-portrait became kind of redundancy, kind of funny activity, if you think about it, when nobody else is around. And it's like trying to remember your own existence by recreating yourself again and again and again and again. And again. Primero quiero decirte que en mi familia, con mis padres, fuimos una familia muy unida. Fue uno de los motivos que no me decidía pronto a casarme con tu papá, porque tenía miedo de dejar a mi familia, porque pues tu papá y su familia vivían aquí, aquí en Estados Unidos, y pues yo sabía que nos teníamos que venir para acá. Tu papá me decía que si nos casábamos, si nos veníamos, nomás iba a ser por un año que mientras que juntábamos dinero y que hacíamos una casita allá y nos, nos regresábamos. Y, y pues ya en esa forma me convenció y nos casamos, pues nos venimos. Que ya tenemos aquí un pedacito aquí en Estados Unidos. En la casita donde vivimos, está chiquita, pero fue aquí en Estados Unidos, porque ya nunca hicimos nada. Los empezamos a ver crecer aquí y, y pues yo creo que aquí nos vamos a quedar. Cuando se viene uno para acá, a uno nos va un poquito mejor, a unos poquitos les va un poquito peor. Pero yo pienso que las historias casi son las mismas. Es pesado venirse también para acá. Dejar su gente, dejar su familia. Y, y luego la pasada también es, es sufrimiento. Es de, de venir bien asustado, venir con temores de que no sabes si, si llegues bien o no. Pues no me arrepiento porque, porque aquí, como muchos dicen, y yo también lo digo, aquí hay muchas oportunidades para superarse y los veo a ustedes realizando sus sueños y, y pues eso me siento tranquilo, tranquila, contenta de estar aquí en este país, pero también perdí muchas cosas. Perdí muchos años de, de no convivir con mis padres, con mis hermanos. De no poder ver, ir a, a ver a mi hermano cuando falleció. Todos los años también que no estuve viendo a mi padre. Eso es lo que sí me duele también. De lo único que... Que me pesa, 
que me pesa de, de estar aquí es no convivir con mi familia, pero de lo demás, yo estoy agradecida con este país que nos ha dado oportunidades de, de avanzar poco a poquito y más que nada por ustedes. Yo soy, me hice ciudadana, pero mi país es mi país. Este país también, lo siento también parte mío, porque aquí ustedes nacieron, aquí hemos vivido, aquí yo he vivido más parte de mi vida que en México. Pero siempre está uno con, con su pueblito, con su gente. Este es nuestro hogar, este es nuestro país, ¿verdad? Y donde ustedes estén bien, nosotros también vamos a estar.
desperté y se había dado la vuelta. No se escuchaban los niños, ni la pareja del fondo. Mi compañero de asiento ya no estaba, tampoco mi celular. La micro estaba tan vacía, ni siquiera podía ver el conductor. ¿Aló? ¿Aló, mamá? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo hiciste eso? No quiero hablar contigo. Pásame la mamá. Mentira, pásame la mamá. Con mi mamá teníamos una perra, la chola. Apareció un día encerrada atrás, donde el papá guarda las herramientas. Me miraba raro, pero se notaba que estaba feliz de verme. No podía llevar a mi mamá. No me voy a buscarme, no me voy a encontrar porque estoy aquí. Quizás la chola me encontraría, como cuando chica. siete. Once noventa y nueve, once noventa y nueve, once sesenta y siete, once sesenta y siete. Me mudé de casa hace poco a esos departamentos viejos con piso de mármol. Desde mi ventana se podían ver los árboles del parque. ¿Qué hiciste? Los sábados sacaba la basura. Y sí, porque la sacaba la rata y a la chola alcanzaba a morder la bolsa. Por eso me retaba. Pero la chola lo hacía para cuidarme. Porque podía subir cualquier cosa ahí. ¿De qué te reí? Sí, todavía me muerto la uña. Pero ya te dije que lo voy a dejar. Además tengo un montón de esmaltes para cuando crezcan. No, mejor me equivoco. Acuérdate. Carabinero, hombre verde. Mi nombre es Simona. Mi número es 9706 372 Quédate quieto Siéntate Ya, po Me acuerdo cuando llevábamos a la chola a la playa. 
a unos juegos. Mi papá se la llevó porque le ladraba todo. ¿Te acuerdas ahí? Tú estabas ahí, ahí. En una cosa gigante metálica. No para ahí no moverte. Me acuerdo que cuando te vi, después ya no pillaba a la mamá. ¿Me estás mirando? Me tuve con un hombre extraño. No sabía si me estaba mirando a mí. Pero... Pero no escuchaba la chula. Escuchaba otro perro. Busqué a la mamá. Me dejaste sola. Sí. Y tú no estabas ahí. No. No era el papá. Me dejaste con él.
la luz. Creía que me estaba imaginando cosas, pero no. La chola y yo sabíamos que algo estaba pasando. Mi bufanda son mis intestinos por la antejuela. Me acuerdo que cuando chica encontré una del piso. La cogí y se la llevé a mi mamá. Creía que era una estrella. Pero ella me dijo que no era eso, que era otra cosa.
aimer. Aimer, ouais. Mais c'est pas tout d'aimer, hein? Faut savoir comment. Aimer comme un artisan, rendre précieuse toute matière, être l'orfèvre du désir, mettre le corps en lumière. Aimer comme un clandestin au péril d'être découvert, emprunter des identités, emprunter. Aimer en mécanicien, avoir tous les outils, être expert en engin, mais chargé toujours trop cher. Aimer comme un soldat, obéissant aux cris, voulant sauver le monde, mais ailleurs que chez lui. Aimer comme un concierge, torcher tous les dégâts de ceux qui croient aimer, mais qui ne s'aiment pas. Aimer comme un chef qui cuisine et apprête les délices qui font naître, les goûts ou les dégoûts. Aimer comme un athlète qui prend des suppléments, qui va péter aux frettes, mais performe, peu importe. Aimer comme un jaloux qui cache tous ses avoirs, qui soupçonne les coups que lui-même se donne. Aimer, aimer comme un artiste qui protège son ego sur tout autre complice qui accepte son lot. Aimer comme un novice qui a attendu longtemps, longtemps en soupirant pour une petite vite. Aimer comme un sultan qui en aime déjà dix, qui a cinquante marmots, mais bien plus de chameaux. Aimer, aimer comme un enfant, tout ou rien, tout de suite, admirer ses parents, mais avoir peur du noir. Aimer... Aimer... Aimer comme un capitaliste, investir le profitable, avoir des valeurs sans principe et la franchise monnayable. Aimer n'importe qui se chercher une histoire pour contrer l'ennui morne de soi-même. Aimer comme un pied qui, à force de se frotter, cause l'usure maligne et fait pousser la corde au cœur. Aimer en fonctionnaire, en deux congés, de maladie, garder son ancienneté sans heures supplémentaires. Aimer, aimer comme un beau crosseur, sans détour, fourré comme une machine, jouer au salaud joueur de tour. Aimer comme un douanier, posté aux frontières du sensible qui tamponne et taponne, blindé dans sa cabine, aimé comme un vautour, carnassier des cœurs morts, vautour contre vautour, s'arracher des lambeaux d'amour, aimé, 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 ouais, ouais, ben c'est pas tout d'aimer, faut savoir comment, puis moi, ben, moi je t'aime chaque jour différemment, j'accepte tes rengaines, tu me pardonnes souvent. C'est un peu ça, sûrement. Aimer. Aimer, ouais. So we're going to do uh, have a little time for question and answer, and Ryan will be bringing you the microphone if you have a question, so that we actually get the question recorded on um, on the cameras. Thank you. Out of curiosity, uh, you know, I noticed a lot of um, uh, uh, sim uh, a lot of uh, symbolism for the 
I noticed a lot of uh, repetition of of hands throughout the um, uh, the um, videos. Um, out of curiosity, um, what do you what do you think? Uh, the hand. Uh, why do you think there's so much repetition of hands in all all of the shorts? I think there's a lot of repetition of body images in general, and yeah, you noticed hands. Maybe is one of those compon components. But I so I'm not sure why hands in particular. But uh, many of the films um, like reflect reflect on, on body images and corporality and the embodied experience uh, of, you know, different things. So I think that's one of the reasons. Um, and also we, something we noticed, uh, like while curating this work, is that um, many of the, of the films made by, made by women are, by women animators, are like have this um, how can I say that, like, there's a lot of observation, a lot of patience and observations. Not, they're not always wanting to participate and to, 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 you know, to act on something or to do something about uh, things, but there's a lot of observation. And in that observation, uh, many, things, many times the body it gets, in, you know, like in the, in the, in, in, in the, like the space you're working with or where, what is being observed by you. So uh, I think that's one of the, the, those are like maybe some of the reasons for seeing many like uh, body images and repetitions of body parts and um, things like that. So there's, you know, like looking at myself so many times. So uh, like this, this film, uh, An Educated Woman, where you have this self portrait that, and she's telling, well, it's kind of weird to do that exercise of, of doing a self-portrait once and again and again and again. So many films have like that kind of attitude, like observing uh, yourself and exploring yourself and trying to find out what's going on. And uh, so maybe, yeah, hands uh, can be one element, but I think it also happens with other uh, parts of, of the body and uh, the body in general. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Thank you. And other questions? Was there a particular reason or um, the way that you structured the films and the order that you showed them? Was there any sort of reason behind that? Well, several uh, reasons. Uh, we tried to put some. There were not really topics, like specific topics behind the the, the films, uh, but we tried. Some of them have like share certain things. So, uh, we tried to put together films that that uh, were talking about kind of similar things. Uh, so, and and then we could see them evolving toward other feelings. So it's there's uh, first like some kind of topics, like open topics, being one, like the first topic, the, the, the body, and uh, identity, self-identity, you know, an, an exploration of the self. Uh, and then mo we're moving toward other different topics, but other toward different um, kind of uh, affective dispositions of the films. So like w what we wanted to do was like exploring like the, the widest amount of of feelings and um, yeah, like emotions and uh, aesthetics and uh, concerns that we could. But we we were trying to move from, let's say, a very concrete thing like the body, toward more abstract topics like time. You know, there's this very abstract reflections on time, chronological time, how we how this person experiences time, or how is the rhythm of life for a young woman, uh, and how maybe, um, yeah, and at the end, uh, well, we have love, which we expected it to appear many times in, in 
women, films made by women, you know, we have these stereotypes of, oh yeah, there has to be so many love films. And no, well, actually there was, there was only this one about love, but uh, we thought it was, it was a nice, you know, a very interesting thing uh, to have the only, only film about love and uplifting film of the selection, uh, like at the end of the of the show. So there's you know there's many variables and you have to consider them all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Hi. <clears throat> Hi, I just wanted to thank you for that really amazing range of films. It was really illuminating, and um, I just appreciate the care that went into selecting from the 90 to offer us 12. Um, I was wondering, I mean, I guess um, I wanted to start with the film Movimientos en el Sótano, mm -hmm. and invite um, any particular commentaries about that. I missed mm -hmm. the name of the poemario at the end that it's dialoguing with, and so I was curious about that specifically, but then also just wanted to open up um, a conversation about direct and indirect relationships with violence in the films. So thinking particularly... With the relationship with... Violence. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in in this film, there are there's this sense of inside and outside and um, things that come in and, and expressions that explode out and and so anything about that particular short, but then in general, if you wanted to s talk about violence in the films and um, ways that some of the filmmakers are intersecting with it more directly and others are intersecting with it less directly. Okay, yeah. Well, that film is a very interesting exercise. It's actually a, a that film was made made by one of the curators of this <laughs> of this show, Cecilia Traslaviña, and it was a part of her a master's in literature a thesis, and it was a critical response or a creative response through images to this poetry book, which is uh, Estancia and Domest y Domestica, a very experimental uh, poetry work by Chilean uh, young poet Mariela Malue. And the exercise was very interesting because she did the poem, the poetry is very violent and it's very, there's a lot of of repressed feelings and a lot of compulsion and um, also a sense of duty that this woman has. She, this, the, 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 poet, the, the poetry book is about uh, this woman who lives in a house. And the book is about the relationship between her and the house. The house being a subject too and oppressing her in, this, in many different ways. So she feels this compulsion because she was taught to uh, clean the house all the time. And she cleans the house until she bleeds. And uh, so she cleans and cleans and cleans once and again. And she feels all these forces, very abstract forces pushing her, and, uh, you know, like uh, in, in different ways. And so we, what, we, what we see in the, in the book is like, um, like the um, several stories, let's say, and several moments of this relationship with the house and how it evolves to other relationships with with some men and other people. Uh, but in the in the film, uh, what Cecilia does is like uh, focusing on specific things that appeal personally to her. And this, there was this um, sensation of confinement for example, that was, that was very important to her. And she, so she, she did a lot about that. And she created this set. And she, she showed us how she did it and how she made of, of, of that house a closed space where you like, were kind of trapped. Uh, and then a lot of, uh, for example, creation of a, a, a lot of textures and things that could be 
destroyed and could be transformed uh, in ways in, uh, that in which uh, I mean in ways that animation like commercial animation normally don't you know doesn't do. So that's one of the things I like uh, about the film that uh, she creates this materiality and then she explores how to change it and how to destroy it through the intervention of these two very mysterious, like disturbing little hands. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's about the work. Um, her, her, her interest was like trying to um, find a way to talk about poetry uh, without going to the traditional critical discourse and using creativity uh, to actually to set a, a, an interesting relationship with poetry. Like, how is that we experience poetry? Uh, so that's about the, the, the exercise in particular. And then the, the, about violence, it was a common theme. There's many, many kinds of violence, very, some, some of them subtle, some, of, some other really uh, evident um, in the films. And um, I think it's not, it shouldn't be a surprise that when you call women who make experimental films, they're talking about things that uh, they cannot usually talk. Uh, and uh, animation, uh, I think it is, it is for women, and we confirmed this through interviews, a space of uh, freedom. Because it's uh, like uh, the freedom of, wow, animation is such a powerful me medium. I can do anything with it. With it. I can do anything materially, but also symbolically. I can really express anything, even if it's very difficult to express. I can create very complex things to express the, you know, the, the complexities of life. And violence is one of those big realities of women's life that many, is very difficult to address because we are, well, because of many things, but some one of, of those is that we are not used to, to express that and to complain that much about that. And the second one is that there is not a, a symbolic repertoire a, of expressing violence as a, there is for expressing, I don't know, love. You know, there's been so much written, so much expressed. We know the words, we know how, how you know, like there's so much said. But about, around violence and vi like the way women experience violence, there's not much you know, like there's not many conventions about that. So women have to explore that. And uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's uh, they, they do it in a very interesting way in, in animated films. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? Hi, um, I Hi. was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the film about the girl who was, had the dog. Oh, about the girl and the dog. Yeah. Like the, the, the one with the, yeah, the long one, like the has uh, footage with, uh, and it has like some animation and like. Yeah, and there's okay. a lot of like sur a feeling of surveillance with surveillance footage, like what? Well, that, that film is um, called Ojos de Linterna, and it's a, it's a film that was made um, within like a very like an experimental model that is being used by some authors in Chile, uh, which is um, based on um, they work with very few rules. So you set your rules and you say, okay, this is more, more or less what I'm going to do. And I have four, four rules that let's say, uh, a very open topic and uh, lots of improvisation and the use of materials that you have that are you know, just available, immediately available to you. In this case, in the moment of the, that the, the, the film, the, the footage was captured. 
So you see that there's a lot of, of like pieces of, gar of, of trash and paper, and all those are found things. Me most of them are found things. So that's one of the big things of the film, like how it was made and trying to follow this, like this, is this perspective, this certain idea of experimentation. Uh, but about the topic, um, uh, I think it, it, the film really tries to um, to show a very intimate experience of this girl who goes out in the night to the city, and then you know strange things start to happen. And she's lost, and uh, she starts ha like other things of her psychic life come back to her you know, fears and other presences that, of course, are, are not clear to us, but we can, you know, like, we can see that they come and go. Memories come and go, um, yeah, different types of emotions. Uh, uh, tense, like, the conflictive relationships with some subjects. So it is, um, I think, in this film, like, the sensation of being lost is like a trigger for all this uh, emotional exploration that we see. And I think the visual part really shows us how confusing it is. So I, I, that's something I, we really liked about that film that is not clear at all. And like the images are very, very um, coherent, let's say in a weird way with, uh, with the story that very fragmented story that this girl is telling. So yeah, that's more or less that about the film. OK, mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. Hi, thank you um, Hi. for coming here for us. Um, I noticed another common thread with the films was uh, with the audio, there was often really low frequencies um, that kind of just like felt like you were surrounded by almost, your, like you, you were talking about just now for Ojos de Linterna is like this psychic mm -hmm. part to it and, and kind of how mental processes were happening. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk more about the experimental side and the audio part mm -hmm. of these. I think sound, experimental sound, is a big thing in Latin American animation. That's uh, something we really like about all the films we include in, in, in our programs, is that most of them have very sophisticated sound. And uh, there's a lot of uh, or like very organic sounds. There, maybe you also notice that uh, not only in sound but in uh, the images, there's a lot of uh, there's a preference for objects and for texture, touching things and look at them, look looking at them from a very close distance. And I think um, the role of sound in many of these films is to emphasize that that very close relationship with material reality, and also how many times uh, we, we experience uh, life in a much more intense way that could be imagined. So those low frequency sounds and this, uh, uh, there's another version of this program where we show other films that have very weird sounds that you couldn't couldn't really relate to anything on the outside world. So that's another element. There's like this external uh, element of, okay, sound as a way to emphasize a relationship with the, with the material world. But on the other hand, we have sound as a way to express uh, introspection and uh, the singularity of uh, psychic life uh, or of experience like, experience in the sense of uh, perception, 
you know, when uh, you have if the films, have, many of the films are showing uh, feelings that are not very comfortable. There's a lot of discomfort, fear, uh, like boredom, uh, anxiety, all these kinds of, you know, just these liminal feelings that ugh, are so difficult to express. Uh, and I think uh, sound plays a, a big role in, in trying to show how this life of the inside and this, this life of sensation uh, works. You know, like how, so I do it through sound to show how I experience uh, something. So when, when these weird feelings come, many times the sound gets so weird, sometimes really uh, like this scratching of the nails on the, on the, on the glass. So you're like, oh no, please don't do that. So I think that's, yeah, I would say that about the sound. Hi, thank you again for this wonderful program. Um, I was really interested in all the, the variety of approaches to animation that are included in this program, um, the, the different techniques that are, that are being used, and also the just sort of the openness with regard to even what's considered animation. So, so when I saw mm -hmm. the time-lapse piece, for example, I was a little surprised and <clears throat> really appreciative that that was included. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like live action, and yet, of course, I mean, the definition of animation is pretty can be construed in a really broad way with regard to the idea of temporality and the frame by frame no, you know mm -hmm. process of image making um that piece in particular had a lot about light and um the temporality of of changing light and that also that the clock. The clock. Oh, yeah, I love it. I, I love that because I didn't really say the way they introduce it really slowly. And like at some point you start becoming aware of it and wondering how long has it been there? Anyway, I just thought uh -huh. um, it would be, it, I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about your choices in terms of making sure there's like this really broad range of techniques that we get to experience in a program like this. Okay. Well, we re really received a like, really wide variety of, of, of films, and there were all kinds of techniques. In Latin America right now, there's a lot of stop motion. And we, at the end, we only included, without really wanting it, uh, just realizing we only included one stop motion film. And it, it, it is a Cuban uh, film, and stop motion is not that big in Cuba. You know, it's, it's really important in Mexico, for example, or in Chile. but. So it was, you know, the kind of some random things that uh, we were more attracted to certain films than others, but we were not trying to like um, say, okay, uh, the Mexicans are important in this technique, so we're going to show uh, something like that. We didn't do anything like that. Um, what we tried was um, to include different countries, uh, different techniques, that we really tried to uh, to show because there's there was so many that, I mean like if you saw all the films it was much 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 more so we really didn't want to leave anything uh, important uh, outside of the selection uh, and we we saw that uh, what you just said that there's a very open um, notion of animation. And th this is the way animation is being taught right now in, in many of the Latin American schools, uh, in art schools mainly. So many of the students come from art schools, not animation schools. And that's what you get. Other, in other cases, um, these techniques come from um, another reality that is many animators, maybe not the youngest animators, but Many animators are artists who have found, have explored different media and have found the miracle of animation. It's like, 
wow, now I can do whatever I want, basically. And uh, they combine uh, those te te animation with many other techniques. Uh, so at the end, I think they, those other techniques, those other media come back and get into the animated uh, work. And we, are not, we see that in, the, in this program, but also in, in other programs we have curated, like painting, uh, like oil painting, like traditional painting, uh, being animated in very interesting ways or just other techniques. So we did try to, to include as many techniques as we could and also as many, uh, let's say, like affective dispositions of the films as we could. Although at the end we realized that these uh, maybe ugly feelings uh, were more prevalent and like uh, that than you know, that, that nice, happy feelings. And that was, I think that was a good thing that we were not trying these women, the women who, women animators, experimental animators are definitely not trying to please anybody. And that is really like, I'm like, yes, this is what we, we are happy to, to, to realize that that's what, what is happening. Even the youngest uh, women, they are not trying to do beautiful things just because it's spectacular things that can be sold, but uh, pieces of art that can be interesting and that can be um, pieces of knowledge too, not only just beautiful animated silly things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank no, thank you very much. Mm.